Good morning, everybody. Danielle and Gina here again this morning. How are you? Hope Yay. everybody is having an amazing day. It's all still loading on my side, so I'm waiting so I can do things with it. Yay. So good. At least you didn't have to go to New York today. Yes, I had an IT, my IT client had a disaster yesterday and it looked like I was going to have to go to New York City um, and... This is what happens when you have a client who begs and begs and begs to stay with you and you really don't want to do stuff. And it was a disaster in my day yesterday, so I didn't get all the things done I wanted to do yesterday, but it is what it is. Okay, Sharon is with us this morning as always. Thank you, Sharon. We love you. Good morning, Thanks Sharon. For always being with us. Yes, Gina is still outside. Gina is still on vacation. I say vacation and I should be vacation because she's been working. Her husband actually got mad at her yesterday for talking to me. Yeah, he did. I don't care. Yes. I got a ton of calls yesterday. It, my day was crazy yesterday. My client told me something before he went on vacation. He's on vacation right now. And I thought he was joking. He wasn't. So my day ended up being nuts yesterday. Nuts, nuts, nuts. So Today, I'm looking forward to a better day, though. I have to tell you, I did something different with my hair this morning, a new hair product, and it's made it all fluffy and it's bothering me. I'm like, why is my hair? Because my hair is used to stick straight. Fluffy hair is a weird thing for me. So this morning, our myth for the day is we are busting myths all week long, like we had said yesterday. And today, the myth of, the myth of software equaling success. Software... The software equal success, Gina. This is one of Gina's favorite. Absolutely not. It does not matter what project management tool you're using. It does not manage. It does not matter where your website is. It does not matter where you are hosting your course. None of it. It does not matter where you're hosting your landing pages because apparently people think that that is a totally, completely separate entity. I, I, I will know. say that there is one exception to this. Um, MailChimp. People who use MailChimp for their I was getting emails. to that. I was getting to that. The only thing that, the only thing that matters is your email client. Ouch. And that is because deliverability matters. That is the only one. Like that, that's actually the only one. There are many that are really good. Our favorite is Active Campaign. Um, there's ConvertKit. There's Constant Convert Contact. Kit. ConvertKit's okay. Um, it, but you'll, deliver, you'll, deliverability is still pretty good with it. Yeah, but it, you'll outgrow that one too. So you, like, yeah. you, like that one you'll still outgrow. So I mean, it's okay. I think it's expensive for what it is, but it's okay. The only other one... MailChimp matters, Sharon is asking, because it gets blacklisted by a lot of emails. So your emails are going to spam. The reason why is MailChimp is free. And because MailChimp is free, a lot of spam bots and things like that use it. That is why. So unfortunately, I can't remember what the statistics are right this second. Like 60% of your emails get missed because they go to spam. Especially yeah, if you have a, Gmail, that's not good. a free Gmail account. Then yeah. really, really makes a big deal. So that's not good. So a lot of times what I ran into as an OBM, I mean, Danielle's ran into this as well, is I would have clients that are coming to me and they're asking me a question and they're like, like I'll use Kajabi, for example. When Kajabi came out, um, I had client, a client or multiple clients that were all about it. They were like, so like the biggest names are using them. Everybody's using them. So because they're using that software, it might, that must be why they're, they're successful. It's an all in one, um, which makes, which makes it, you know, even better. You know, you're spending this money and you can do everything you need to do out of this one platform and everything's all in one place. And that it does not work that way. There is no all in one solution for anything. And it's also just because you typically, if you see an, a major name or a major influencer um, pushing a software or a product, they're an affiliate of it. So you're clicking that link in their um, email or whatever it is to sign up for the free trial that they're offering you and they're making money off of you. So 
think about that for a second is it's just it's just affiliate marketing so i'll use a really good one um melissa griffin she uh, i like to think is one of the ones that really helped put convert kit and lead pages on the map and um they are and she's an affiliate of both those major affiliates actually like i think she's like like way up there like with them she speaks at their conferences all of that stuff so put that should put that into perspective for you um but as far as things being an all-in-one solution kajabi yes you can email but it's not it still doesn't it still doesn't deliver as well it doesn't segment like you want it to it's good for emailing daniel help me explain this one I don't think there's a great way to explain it. I can't really explain it because somebody, there's always going to be somebody that's going to come in and try and argue with what we're trying to say. But, you know, Kajabi, it, it's just not good for. What okay. So it's Kajabi, I, I'm thinking about this here. Um, Kajabi it, trying to be all in one. They fail at a lot of things, unfortunately. They do a few things very, very well. So that's not saying that they're completely terrible, but they are not what I would consider. I call them a hobby business tool. Yes. I mean, they are very much for somebody who doesn't take their business seriously. Anybody, and I actually had this conversation with a corporate client um, and who has corporate clients the other day. And she's like, well, I've looked at Kajabi. I've used Teachable. She goes, and I've, I've tried Infusionsoft and I just, I hate their support. Infusionsoft support is so bad. It and is awful. Every time you want to do something, you have to call them. Yes. You have to call them constantly and they're bad. Um, and it, it's just not, they're not tools that make sense when you have a real business. This is from a client who's been in the corporate world longer than I have. She's like 10, 15 years older than me. And she worked owning her own business working with the corporate world. She said, I need something that's up to corporate world standards. She said, and none of those tools that you find on Facebook are up to corporate standards. No. Nope. Um, except for she had one thing that she she wishes had a better option for a smaller business. And that was Salesforce. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Said, Maybe I could use that for that. And we talked through it because I come from Salesforce world. And um, we we talked about it a bit. And I'm like, well, Salesforce wouldn't be for this. You have a full course. So we're building her a completely custom website, WordPress website that will do everything she needs because that is a corporate that's tool. Had, that's what you would have to do. So, okay, so my brain is starting to turn on. You guys are going to have to excuse me. Um, sharing a one room with my night owl husband and I'm an early bird does not work. Uh, so you guys are going to have to pardon me. My brain is not kicked on yet. Um, but just to give another couple of examples of how this does not equal success. Um, a lot of people come to us wanting to use lead pages. They're like, I want to put all my sales pages on lead pages because they say that it's going to increase my conversions by 30%. I have, I still don't understand that marketing because all they're doing is giving you a template. What that has nothing to, to do that with that has nothing to do with it. That has nothing to do with your conversions. The way that the way you could have a really ugly landing page that converts at 70% because the copy on it is really good. The marketing that led up to that landing page is already good. You've gotten your you've gotten that prospect. They've already decided before they made it to that landing page that they're going to purchase. And all of that comes from good copy. Um, or them finding you on like via an SEO search. That's what matters when it comes to sales pages and landing pages and things like that. It's, it's the words that are going to do it, not the software. So you can uh, do that on your website. You can absolutely do that on your website. Like you could legitimately do, you could have host your courses. You could host all your sales pages, your landing pages, your website. You can do like a shop. You can do everything on a WordPress site and with a membership plugin and a e-commerce plugin and be good to go. And most people don't realize they, they don't like a lot of people don't want to admit that because then they wouldn't be making money off their affiliate products. Yeah, I don't. We really keep our tools very slim. And at the end of this, we'll go through what we're we going to go through our tools. tools. Yeah. 
Um, cause somebody on my team said, Oh, you're going to be talking about this. You should share what you guys use. So we will go through that, but it is so important to know that your tool, even WordPress isn't what makes you successful. It's yeah. how you use those tools. Um, I don't care if you're, if you are using Salesforce, I don't care if you're using, um, every corporate tool in the book for marketing and sales and all of those things. It doesn't matter if you don't use them properly. One free landing pages, uh, on a website. I don't no. understand. So there are free landing pages, Sharon. I'll, I'll go back to the, I'm going to answer your question in a second. Let me finish what I was saying. So it's how you use your, your tools. So I don't care if you do do it all on, on WordPress, which it is a phenomenal tool and it's great. If you haven't done the branding piece that I keep coming back to, your branding 101, 102, and 103, if you haven't done that piece, if you do, haven't done solid marketing, if you haven't done solid SEO, if you haven't done solid client avatar work, and then know how to put all of those pieces together to use it for your solid social media strategy. It doesn't matter what you use. I don't care if you're on lead pages, Infusionsoft, Kajabi, ClickFunnels, whatever. It does not it does None matter. of it matters. So, um, so I'm going to answer Sharon's question right now. Okay. What about free landing pages like in Mailer Light? Um, if you don't have a website, it's an okay alternative. Again, it's not about the tool. It's about how you use it. Which WordPress is free. WordPress, if you have, well, your WordPress site, you have to host it and you have to pay. You have to, I mean, you have to host it, but I mean, a domain no, is $15 yes. a year. So yeah, invest in a good website because, well, it's a good website. Um, a mailer, like if you don't have a website up, like if you're in between and trying to build a website and stuff, mailer light would be okay. Um, the tool again, doesn't really matter. It, it's not the tool, it's how you use it. So, if yeah, you, so as long as you have those other pieces that I just talked about set up, that will be okay. Um, again, not the tool. So I want to touch on the basic, what we're going to read between the lines here on this one. So there's an underlying issue here when people are constantly coming to us. Like when people keep asking me, so do you like it? Well, will my projects be better if I use Trello or Asana? What I'm hearing is I don't know how to manage a project. And I'm like, so I'm just trying to use what I see other people use. But so, so that answer is learn how to manage a project. Um, or my landing pages aren't converting. So I'm assuming it's where I'm posting it. No, it's probably your copy. That's more the issue. Well, so, it could be your copy, who you're aiming at. I mean, it, 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 could, um, it could be your branding. There's multiple things, but, but a, essentially the the tool is, is systemic it's the surface level issue and instead instead of thinking you just need to jump software have a consultant or somebody that you know like like that has landing pages that convert well or you know has this you know use your network and have them look at your stuff and most likely they'll be able to tell you what the issue is rather than you thinking you need to jump to another software to try and to try and increase your success. And really all you're doing is spending more money, um, but repeating the same problem. You're just moving it. So it's, so it's kind of like, you know, when um, you were in college and you always had a messy apartment, no matter what you could do. And it was your roommate. And then you guys decide that you want to move somewhere else that maybe it'll be better and your apartment is still messy and it's the roommate it's basically you're it's just like doing the same thing over and over again expecting different results um you're just doing it in a you're doing it in a different place or in a prettier place or a more expensive place or whatever it is and so th that's what it is instead of thinking that it's the software or where you're doing it it really try and find the deeper the deeper issue here so Sharon is asking, I could be confusing things, but I was talking about the landing page for an opt-in and using a free landing page. So if you, depending on where your website is, you could do a landing page right on your website for your free opt-in. There's no reason to, um, unless you've gone to the very cheap side of things and have a Wix website or, or a Weebly web website. You don't need a landing page for your free opt-in. It could just be a form 
it can be um right. i there there is a point of using a landing page for a free opt-in especially when you are new and being able to get the information out there who you are and what you're doing um so you, you, there's multiple ways to do that sharon using mailer like is not really a bad thing again it's not about the platform it's about how you use it um but if you have a website and hopefully you have a good website and not in a professional website, then your website itself will allow you to have a landing page there for something like that. Though so you don't I always would, need one for something like that. We would I want to touch on I want to touch on I think there's a there's confusion as to like why like MailerChimp, Mailer Lord, MailChimp, MailerLite, uh convert kit, things like that. They offer landing pages and they're very simple landing pages within the builder. It's because they're trying to make it easier for you to be able to integrate it on your website for people to be able to opt in. That's all that that is. It's just another way. It's just another way to make integration easier. It's not necessarily a right or wrong. Right. Um, Mailer Lite and MailChimp, there are a couple other ones that offer this, do offer full on landing pages. So if you don't have a website, you can use a full lane, build a full landing page through them. But remember when you're doing that, you're giving, it's their URL and their, their yes. website that's their web address that shows up not yours so i always caution people if you have a website don't do that there um there are, you do want to build your forms in there and you do want to build your email list in there and that that kind of thing and integrate it to your website but try not to use that for your landing page because you're giving them credit not yourself and, and, and again if you don't have a website and you're just starting out and stuff like that and you're just starting to try to build it's decent yeah, it's it's so. better. It's it's one of those there it's better to have it there if you don't have a website than have nothing at all. Mm -hmm. But it's not a permanent solution. And that's kind of what they're trying to do for you is your tool is trying to help you have that in between where you have it, but the idea is it's not it's not a long term fix. It's kind of like a like a band aid while you're building building your actual website where it will be yes Whatever. and wordpress yes absolutely do your landing page on wordpress you just treat it as another page i mean it, it's super simple on wordpress if you're building a wordpress site it, it's very simple to have a landing page on wordpress and there's a lot like convert not convert kit uh lead funnels and click funnels and, and lead pages and all of those they try to tell you you shouldn't do it on your website you should do it here because better conversion no again has nothing to do with the tool it has to do with the website um, and how you yep. use it. So yes, that's true. So we're going to go through our list of what we use internally and how we use each tool. So you understand all of our and tools why and why. So first tool that we use our first line of defense is acuity. Acuity has a form on our website for people to schedule a call with us. We were using Dubsado, but because of some some integrations that we really needed. Dubsado isn't where we needed it quite yet for that. So we use Acuity for scheduling. That's our first thing that we use. The forms, and we do pay for it. We do not, the free version is okay. If you're just starting out, go ahead and use the free version. It works very, very well, but you don't have the forms. You don't have the ability to embed custom things on your website. And that's what we were looking for. Um, so Acuity is our first line of defense. Second line of defense is Dubsado. Dubsado. We first talk about Dubsado all the time. Dubsado is our CRM, our contracts, our uh, online digital signing for our contracts, our tracking. It's where we, yes, where we, for, we email is where we email clients from to track is where we get forms. All of that. And we have workflows that we have built in. It's our address book. It's where we keep up with all of their contact, all of our clients' contact information. It does a lot of stuff. Uh, and we have, we're really, really, really lucky that we have an amazing Dubsado expert on our team who is also helping us, is going to be helping us build in uh, public proposals so that we can offer all of our services as subscription-based packages and not even have to go through a huge sales process Which that is a that is a really exciting option that's coming out you guys so even if you're solo and you're just starting out and you need help with your social media and your content management you want somebody to create it for you we have a solution for you now yes it's really awesome really um, so dubsado number two number three our wordpress website we have 
Oh, good morning, Sarah. Sarah's listening. So hey, yes, Sarah. if you need anything, Sarah Lee Day is amazing at Dubsado. She has a YouTube channel out now for Dubsado tidbits, which is also awesome. I only got to listen to one yesterday, but I did listen. I, my day was crazy yesterday. I will listen to them all because I don't actually <laughs> use Dubsado. Yeah, I will be tuned. I will be checking them out when when I get home because I am really excited for Sarah. Um. So. WordPress website is number two or number three, sorry. WordPress, we have a full on website. We have contact forms. We have a chat bot on our website that goes into our um, Facebook Messenger. So everything's all in one place. We have our, we have forms that are embedded on there to fill out. We have our freebies, our landing pages, everything all right there. And we, with Be Boss Girl, the Be Boss Girl website, we have everything built in. We're adding a membership piece. So we're gonna have our full membership site and trainings and all kinds of stuff added to our current website. And our website is actually being redone. So And all the hosting is through SiteGround. Yes, we use SiteGround for hosting. And it I love the best customer service. <laughs> so I am I, I come from IT, so I've used every pretty much hosting service out there, Bluehost and Flywheel and a small orange and all kinds of stuff. SiteGround has absolute best customer service ever. And if you are not technical and are having technical issues on your site as well, SiteGround will help you and at least guide you in the right direction, even if they won't do it for you, which sometimes you'll get a guy that will even help you do that. Um, and they are awesome. I, I love their customer service. Um, our next thing that we use for project management, and we talked about this last week or the week before, ClickUp. ClickUp is a project management. Our internal task management is Trello, which again, you've heard us talk about. We use Google. We use G Suite. We G use Suite Google. For business. Yeah. We use, yeah, and that's our email client. And then that's also where we store like, any anything that's client facing or that needs to be shared for the team. That's where the doc sharing goes in Google Drive. Anything at the management level is done in iCloud. Mm -hmm. We are all uh, on Max here as far as the admin team is concerned, and we share a lot. There's a lot of collaboration and integration to share everything um, on, on the Mac itself natively built in. So Zoom, we use Zoom for all of our client calls for obviously for this it every is. morning. Um, we also have Grasshopper is our phone system. And that allows us to have our phones both in an app on our cell phones, on our desktops. Uh, and as we add team members that need to be able to answer the phone and things like that, like adding Allison or EA and all of that, it just integrates across the board and we can have, they have full huge enterprise system. Now I used to build physical phone systems for businesses and stuff like that. And I love Grasshopper because I don't have to do anything. <laughs> That was like one of my, my, my son was like, well, you could just build the system out. I'm like, no, no, I'm not doing that. I refuse. Um, and we use Slack for all of our team and a lot of our client communications. That is what we use for software. And at a way, which we mentioned earlier, active campaign is our email marketing plan. Oh yeah. Yeah. And active campaign is our email marketing, but that's what we use for software. We don't. Oh no, we use QuickBooks for, um, bookkeeping and investing. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. So but that's our stack. It's not a complicated stack. We do spend some money on that. Um, we are going to be integrating Tailwind for our own Instagram. And yes, I always preach to all of you to do it manually, but we are getting to the point now where I can't keep up with it and I can't be consistent. So remember that that's the thing I keep saying is if you can't be consistent, then you use something like that. And I'm, I am at that point that I cannot continue to be consistent with where I need to be for growth and all of that. So Tailwind is the last one uh, that we're using. Uh, QuickBooks Online may have been what you were listening for. So QuickBooks is our accounting software. Uh, we have hired a, a, a CPA. Well, she, actually she's an EA, which is a, I don't remember what that stands for. She's an IRS registered CPA. Um, and she does all of our bookkeeping and everything for us because we have now hired that out, which is why we're on QuickBooks Online because that makes that process a whole lot better to have her doing all of that bookkeeping. And we hopefully in the next 30 to 60 days, we'll be bringing her on as our CFO because uh, we are getting to the point where we really need a full 
financial officer here as part of the business. Um, and, and our tools from here on out, aren't we're not adding to the software. We're not adding to anything. We're adding bodies because that's yeah. the next things that we need. Um, I am interviewing people for hiring a sales team for both DG Marketing and Be Boss Girl. Uh, that is our next phase of hiring somebody is hiring a sales team because enrolled agent. Thank you, Sarah, because I could not think of what you used for. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, I love when she shows up. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> and um, I just, I don't have time to do all of the things and wear all of the hats anymore yeah, as we're growing. I just, I just, yeah, me either. Like I just, when it comes to the financial piece, and for you guys uh, that don't know, I'm the business manager currently for both the, um, for DG and BBG. And it's getting outside of my realm of knowledge and want to. Yeah, we just, we can't do everything anymore. As things grow, things get exponentially more complicated. Um, and on a show level, like you have, we have to like, just to let you guys understand when you get to the corporate level, sorry, you guys, I know I'm outside and it's apparently, it's apparently trash day, like what the hell. Um, but when it gets, when it gets to the corporate level, when it comes to the accounting portion, there are projects and you have to charge the project and then there's codes and it's the job cost accounting comes in and that just goes, Gina goes, nope. You take it. Nope. Don't, you don't want to do that anymore. Nope. Nope. It's, it's one thing to have a spreadsheet and go, okay, we got this much money. We don't have this much money. <laughs> this is coming in. This is going out. That's one thing. But when it starts getting beyond that, you need to have a professional in. Like the things that we tell people not to mess with and to, de to not DIY are your finance and your legal. absolutely true and hence why we're bringing Nicandra you will hear us mention Nicandra and maybe it will bring Nicandra on for a session at some point yeah um, it would be cool to have her and she she is going to step in as our CFO she is our bookkeeper in our CPA now but she's going to be stepping in as our CFO over the next few months so we again our software isn't going to change a whole lot from here out as we grow the next thing that we will probably grow to um, and we, ha it, it's going to be a while before we outgrow Dubsado, but we will, unfortunately, eventually, especially with hiring a full sales team, the plan is to have uh, around five sales people by the end of this year, uh, we will need to move to uh, sales. like Salesforce because we are not going to be able to manage that type of stuff in Dubsado, unfortunately. So we are, but I think we'll probably still keep Dubsado in place for some of the things that we do. We will just be adding Salesforce for the CRM, the sales piece of it. So that's what we use, everybody. It's not complicated. It's not hard to use. Again, WordPress, your best friend. You could do a lot of so our much of that. A lot of our stuff is multi-purpose. And that's where a lot of people screw up is they, for every single thing or task in their business, they think they need a piece of technology for it. You actually don't. Um, you or, or, or they think they need an all-in-one and an all-in-one is also not going to do it. And, and, and all in, oh my God, the all-in, the all-in-one thing that I think, I think that that's what, like, I think that's what drives me bonkers the most is there, there is no all-in-one. There, there is not. And if you, and here's, here's the thing, if you're afraid like there's one thing in keeping your costs low and looking how you can use what you have. That's one thing. That's a, that that's not that's not being like cheap. It's being efficient. But if you just are trying to make something be something that it's not, just for the sake of you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, you don't want to take the time to learn. You that, like whatever the I've heard every excuse under the sun. Well, it's all right there, and I don't have to bounce back and forth, and I don't have to think, and blah blah blah. Well, you know, if, if you're getting to the point where you don't want to bounce back and forth, or you don't want to deal with what's going, like really deal with what's going on, it's because you need to hire out and not try and do everything by yourself. So. It just drives me, I'm sorry, it just drives me crazy. There is no all in, there is no all in one solution. There never will be, but you can keep your stack small because there are a lot of tools out there that do a lot of different things and can fill a lot of different gaps for you. But you're, you're hurting yourself looking for a uh, holy grail that does not exist. Yeah. And, and you're gonna, you, you will, and I, we have, Danielle and I have seen time and time again we have seen we have seen people that were set up for success and should have been making six six figures like a month in like a quarter and totally tanked 
where they were because they were too busy worrying about their technology and things that they had no busy w- business worrying about. Mm-hmm. So we see this happen all the time. And we fix it all the time. We fix it all the time. So and start, it's not so, usually a difficult fix. So Sharon yeah. is asking, why do you think some people don't like WordPress? I know you ladies love it. So I will tell you, I love WordPress. She does not. I hated it. I hate it. I still hate WordPress. Um, and the reason, I will tell you why I don't like WordPress. I got annoyed because every time I wanted to do something on WordPress, I had to download a stupid plugin. Every time I wanted to do something, I had to download a plugin and it made me so mad because it just made me mad. So I actually was on Squarespace for a year before Danielle and I merged and we went to WordPress because I was told I did not have to touch it and that the SEO on it was better. So I conceded, but I still hate it. So WordPress, (laughs) WordPress is more complicated to set up uh, initially. It is not click and drag. It is not plug and play. It, it, you do have to know what you're doing and you do need individual plugins to do things because it is such a robust system and you can customize it so much. You have to add all of the little pieces that you want in order to make it do everything. So it is not, you have to have some at least ability to know that you have to go to WordPress a YouTube video to learn how to do something or, or the willingness to do that. Unfortunately, the biggest, two biggest excuses I see is, well, it's not secure. Well, that's a lie. Huge lie. Cause I'm going to tell you some, some four of the biggest websites in the world, most secure websites in the world are built on a WordPress back, back end. Um, yes, you can secure it. You just have to actually secure it and not be an idiot. You have to keep up with your updates because those updates have security in them. You have to make sure that your plugins are updated regularly as in weekly. You have, it's not a hands-off process. Um, another excuse I've heard is, well, it's too hard to learn. WordPress is not hard to learn. And if you don't have the ability to learn it, fine, go with something easy or hire somebody that knows what they're doing. Hire somebody that knows what they're doing. Uh, The one thing that I see is a lot of people start with Wix. So this this is a conversation I want to have about software. I'm sure we're running long, of course. Um, Be careful what you choose when you start for software. Your, your website, your, so, your social media, your everything. Be careful where you start with. So yesterday I was saying that I had a client that chose the wrong software when he started and now it's costing him 100 plus thousand dollars to migrate. I have another client or had when I was in the IT world. We were with them at the beginning as we helped them with some consulting with IT and they didn't want to spend $300 one-time cost on a piece of software. I'll go back to the Wix thing and exp- that that's part of this conversation, Sarah. Yes, starting with Wix is not necessarily the best thing in the world uh, if you plan on growing. If you don't plan on growing, you plan on being a tiny little solopreneur. Yeah, if you just want to freelance. That's fine. It, it, if it, you just want to freelance, it's fine. It's actually fine. Um, but growth doesn't happen on Wix. So this client didn't want to spend $200. Now they had the $200 too. One time cost at startup. Instead, he went with a free piece of software. Three Let's years later, three years later, and I told him the software is bad. When you outgrow this, which you will, you are going to have a hard time getting your data out. Oh, no, no, it'll be fine. That's easy. I'm like, you're going to have a hard time getting your data out by this $200 piece of software. Didn't do it. Went with the software, outgrew it in less than three years which I told them it'd probably taken five years to do it. So it took him even less time, which is awesome because that means they were growing. They came back to us. Okay, we need to migrate off of this. And I'm like, oh yeah, do you remember this conversation? This is about 2000 hours worth of work to manually move every line of data. And he's like, well, let's just do this as cheap as possible. So he went 
to another piece of that $200 software that I told him would be okay. Still didn't go with that. Went to another free product. So mind you, first migration, 2,000 hours at $150 an hour, people. That's what he spent to migrate to another free piece of software that, that was not appropriate of. for his business. They the used migration. it for six months. The software company took down the free software. He lost all of his data, lost it, gone, because he couldn't back it up. He didn't control it. That 2,000 hours it took us, we still had the other software. We just had to repeat and go to software, good software. He finally went to good software. But that's what happens when you try and cut corners in a... So when, when you're planning what you're going to use right now, make sure you're planning for growth. Even if you are just yes. a solopreneur or a freelancer, you may not always want to stay there. Wix, if you don't have the technical ability to move yourself off Wix, but you want everything kept from your Wix website, you're talking at a minimum $1,500 move off your website when you could have spent a couple hundred bucks on. To work. have it spent originally. So like, it's basically you guys like, okay, I know the best way to like kind of give a visual for you guys. You know how when you are building a deck on the back of your house or you're doing something major on your car or something like that and you buy quality in the beginning and you know this the save is the saying spend to save so you spend a little money little a little bit more money up front to save money in the long term that that's the same thing in your business is you want to spend a little money up front to save money in the long term because like Danielle said you could have spent Okay, so we'll just like use our example, like for us to do a web designer build like a basic website for you, it's eight hundred dollars, or it's probably a little more than that now, isn't it, Danielle? It, it, it's more than that. Well, for basic, no, it's still about for that. Basic. And that, yeah, yeah it's but about that, that. Includes all your SEO, all so your that's all your everything. yeah, that includes that includes everything. So you're fully set up, ready to go, one time, and then you know you occasionally when you rebrand, you will pay to redesign it, or you can pay us twenty five hundred dollars to migrate you off of your free thing when you're ready. So do you see the difference? See how much th that is, a, that is a massive savings right in the beginning. We, we have a client right now that we are moving off of Wix, just starting it. And if she would have been on WordPress, it would have just been a rebrand four or $500 maybe. She spent, and she, I don't know where she found this person. They really saw her coming. She spent $1,500 on a Wix website, having somebody design it. And now she's spending $4,500 for us to move over 500 blog posts or something. I mean, it's, it's something ridiculous. We're moving everything to WordPress now. It's a lot of stuff. And, and she like, did that a year ago. So that's, a, that's really that's, close in time. Yeah, it is. Like you should like, yeah, that is really close in time. Or like with your, like, so now a lot of email clients are now starting to offer like the, like, so active campaign, I believe does free migrations now, but not often. So like, if you don't use their native service, it can cost you several hundred dollars for somebody to migrate you off of your free email thing to your, uh, get it, get you set up and ready to go on another email client. So instead just, pick the one that it's going to, like, I, I push this a lot with people. Like if there's, if you're like trying to do everything for free, the one thing that I say that go ahead and pay for, like right in the beginning, it should be one of your beginning costs is your email client. Um, because that, like, and pick something that will grow with you because one of the biggest pains is having to migrate your list and your funnels and all of that from one place to another. So just go ahead. Like, I think if it's active. Actually, no, like, no, no, no. Shh. Don't tell them that. Cause I want them to pay me to migrate them for them. No, seriously, don't. Seriously, you guys, we don't actually do it. hate doing that. We hate it. We actually hate it because it's, it's such a pain because then we have to train you on it and we have clients that want us to train them on it, but then 
are like they break something in there because they weren't paying attention and then it's, it's, it's really a nightmare we actually hate it but active campaign is like nine dollars for like 500 or something like that i mean it's mm-hmm. like it's it's something stupid cheap so, like, just go ahead, and it will grow with you, and you're going to save yourself a headache in the long run. Just, there's just a, go ahead. There's a lot of things that it really is a good idea to invest in. Wix, I pick on Wix. Again, if you're just going to be a solopreneur or a freelancer, and people you don't want people looking for you, you're mostly going to do the sales driving and the lead generation yourself. You're not looking for your website to do anything for you other than basically be a landing page. Wix yeah, is absolutely fine. Yeah, and a portfolio. Fine. Yeah, Wix is fine. Wix is absolutely fine. Um, there's no reason to invest in something more than Wix. If you need your website to be part of your sales process, don't use Wix. Even with having Pinterest to help drive traffic and all of that, still don't use Wix because your SEO is going to be terrible. You can't really do much SEO there. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. So we will say all this to say, um, one, it's not your software. It's more of an, uh, there's a deeper issue there. Um, your software is not going to equal success necessarily. Um, and spend to save and don't, don't be afraid to make investments in your business because that it, there is a cost to doing business. You cannot run a bit like one of my sayings, and I've been saying this for almost two years now, is you cannot free your way to the top. You nope. can't. There is absolutely no like so if like you can but you can keep your software in the neighborhood of a hundred like a hundred dollars and um your business will be will like will operate. So just keep that, keep that in mind. And that is not a lot of money. So don't be, don't be afraid to invest in your business. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself. You do have to spend money to make money. All of those cliche sayings, they are true. So commit, like if this is what you want to do, then commit to it and put your, put, put some skin in the game. Um, But stop, like free is not always better. Yes. Free is not always better. Sometimes free is absolutely fine. If you know the migration path off of it, really spend time to plan your, your growth. Even if your growth is five years from now, plan for that with the software you're choosing now. Because like, like us, with, with, we'll use Salesforce as an example. We know, we know we're going to need Salesforce. We know that we're not at that point yet, but we've researched it. We know how much it's going to cost us. We know, what it will do for us. Like we, we, we know, and we're ready for that. We understand, you know, migrating it off of Dipsado is probably going to be a small bit of a headache, but not, not too bad, but we, we know when we're prepared and we're ready. And, and knowing how to do that migration, mm-hmm. because if you don't know how to do it, if you know that it exists and you don't know how to do it, you know, you're going to have to hire somebody. What is that going to cost? Yes. Plan five years ahead for that. Because that is one of the biggest mistakes a lot of businesses make. They just start with all the free stuff and free, 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 because it's going to be easy, have to migrate. And then, well, okay, so I know migration costs this much to go to this software, but they didn't invest in the, oh, I have to hire somebody to do that. They didn't and take that cost cost me another $20,000 or $5,000, whatever that is. Just knowing what that is, is huge. Your highest costs are always going to be labor. So keep that in mind. Always. Always going to be labor. Okay, everybody, you all, it is Tuesday. I want you all to have an amazing day. Again, rise, become, be everything that you can. Come on over to our Facebook group and join in the conversation there. Not many people let us know what they're going to succeed at this week. So please come on over to let us know where your uh, accountability so that we can be accountable to each other and what you want to win at this week. So we want to know, have a great week, everybody. And a great day. See you tomorrow morning. See you tomorrow.